mustard sweet leave you no doubt tell you about charles yardbird parker was his name the facts he carved his name in history the sax is his axe the organization was miraculous the mastermind of rhythm was he he blew notes that nobody had ever heard before till then Loomis ever been so often true as genius seemed to do he suffered his life through he gave us a yard bird sweet i guess he never stopped blowing with his miserable woes he seemed to poem his only make his person listen feel he never knew not what being low down could be he knew that blowing and the music on a sad degree he blew and blew and blew until he had to change his half the sound and that was all before we knew when he was just a boy in kansas city so pretty after he came to new york town all the local jazz had listened with admiration some before us new sounds around the nation and i deserve some credit for the stimulating renaissance of jazz it makes me very happy to announce a goodly portion of his best works recorded so have a treat hurry it up and get yourself some yard bird
God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see life. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
It's alright. Here comes a sun. Here comes a sun. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Hey, I like it. Come on. Just lovely. That, of course, is a George Harrison number that was a fire. And uh, then in Hawaiian by Star and embellished by Isaiah and our, the rest of our band here, Mark and Dan. Very beautiful. How many of you have heard of the Desert Fathers? It, it's, uh, Desert Fathers are, were early hermit-type uh, spiritual followers in the third to fifth century, and um, people have often, uh, they, they were kind of the precursors to the monastic movement that we have today. Uh, and people have often heard of the Desert Fathers because they wrote uh, things and we have their writings today, but we don't always hear of the Desert Mothers but there were women that were part of this movement as well that went out into the desert. Um, this, during that third to fifth century, is primarily in the Egypt, Palestine, Syrian desert region. And they would live very austere lives, um, following in the way of their understanding of uh, Jesus' um, uh, not placing great emphasis on um, material things, but living in a um, pretty, pretty basic way of living and self-denial and service. So um, today happens to be the feast day, the commemoration day of Paula and her daughter, Eustochium. You know they lived a long time ago because you don't hear that name very often. But they, they were... Uh, women who lived during this period of time in the desert and became very important in the life of the church. And so today is actually the day when we commemorate them. So to tell you a little bit about them, many of these women that ended up going into the desert were actually well-to-do women and, and well-educated women, but something had happened in their lives. It might have been um, the loss of uh, a death of a parent, or the death of a husband. In the case of Paula, Paula was the mom, Eustochium was the daughter. In the case of Paula, her husband had passed away, but not before she'd been married as a, a teen and had five children, four daughters and a son. And then at the age of 32, her husband died. And her, one of her daughter's husbands was a cousin of a woman who had a following of women that were living semi-nomadic lives, and so she kind of turned more towards um, that uh, spiritual path and asked to be part of that. And in the course of that, she met Jerome. And Jerome was a desert father who became very uh, an important figure within the life of the church, noted for his scholarship. And she invited him and two of his travelers to stay with her. And she was deeply deeply impacted by that uh, presence. And so it became a catalyst for her to want to pursue the monastic life. I invite you to join with me Psalm 34. Um, 
I will read the verses that are in lighter type, and I invite you to read those that are in bold. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My My soul soul makes makes its its boast in the Lord. Lord. Let the the humble hear and and be glad. glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart Depart from from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps Keeps all all their their bones. Not Not one one of them them will be broken. broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned.
A reading from Luke, the eighth chapter. Soon afterwards, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. So as I mentioned, Paula came from a very uh, well-to-do background, but uh, as she was going through this transition, she renounced her privileges and the luxury in which she lived, the silk dresses that she was accustomed to wearing and to being um, carried through the city by eunuch slaves. And um, she took on more and more the words of Jerome, who was uh, teaching her the ways of the scriptures. When uh, her daughter, she had a daughter that passed away, that died, she decided to go on pilgrimage with Marcella, the uh, cousin of her other daughter's husband, to the Holy Land. And she convinced Jerome to go with them. There was this entourage of women and they went to the Holy Land, and then they went down into Egypt, and Paula was so taken with the hermits that she met in Egypt that she wanted to stay. But um, Jerome convinced her to return to Bethlehem, and there uh, she and Jerome started a monastery for men and a monastery for women. The women's was so popular that they built two more, And Paula and her daughter, Eustochia, spent their days studying the scriptures, studying Hebrew and Greek and Latin. They were fluent in all of those languages and could read the actual scriptures in those languages. They also started what we today would call a hospice near the spot where it was believed Jesus was born. And they had a roadside hotel where they got their income to keep their monasteries going. It was said that Jerome had a very hot temper and uh, that Paula was someone who was able to soothe him and remind him to think more in the ways of humility and patience as in the way of Jesus. They would offer retreats on both sides of the monasteries and they were very popular. And so Paula and Jerome, at this point, uh, Eustochium was um, an assistant became more and more well-known within the Christian world.
So Paula devoted herself to intensive study of the old and new scriptures, and she um, continued to work with Jerome in uh, deepening her awareness of Hebrew and Greek and Latin. And she practiced a very strict asceticism, so fasting, abstinence, an austere lifestyle so that she would be singularly devoted to God, which Jerome was really intense on. Many believe her most significant accomplishment, however, was getting Jerome to translate the Bible into Latin. She realized that for the people to be able to understand the scriptures, they needed to have a Bible in Latin of the people. And so the Vulgate, if you've heard of that, that is Jerome's translation. Still to this day, it is looked upon as a excellent uh, translation, work of translation in the Latin of the people. And not only was she and Eustochium able to encourage him to do that project, but because they had such knowledge of the languages, they also were able to be involved and assist in the translation. And then they had the nunnery, those who were uh, in the nunnery, doing the copying, because you know back then it was all hand copied, in order to spread it, the scriptures far and wide. She continued to interact with clergy and with bishops and to teach her nuns. Um, and so that when she died in her late 50s, it is said that, again, a lot of this that we know is from Jerome's writing, uh, that her funeral drew a significant portion of the Palestine population, monks and nuns from the monasteries, as well as poor, many poor who she had helped throughout her time. And then a year after her passing, she obtained the title of Saint Paula. After her death, her daughter, Eustochium, took over uh, charge of the nunneries. It was a tar hard task, apparently, because Paula had been so generous in giving away alms that the um, nunneries had no money. Uh, but she continued to work with them to have them uh, be able to continue and uh, also continued to work with Jerome on um, various commentaries of the Bible. And he, in fact, dedicated his commentaries of the prophet Isaiah and Ezekiel to Eustochium. Today, more than a few of us uh, might question the austerity and rejection of worldly pleasures under which these desert fathers and mothers lived. There's even some suggestion that perhaps that other daughter that died might have died from the austerity of, of discipline that they took on uh, as a family. Uh, but others point to the refuge that these nunneries offered for widows who, when their husbands died, many had little recourse uh, for economic subsistence. And also for young women who wanted options, uh, which in that day and age, there weren't a lot of options for young women other than getting married. However we feel about the strictness of these communities, the record should be clear that women as well as men were part of that church history. And um, that's the stories of these women are not always told or known. But it's clear that their devotion to scripture and to prayer was evidence of how dramatic the influence of the life of Jesus was on their lives. And so I invite you to join me in prayer. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, as people such as Paula and Eustochium have been inspired by the life of Jesus Christ and the promises set forth in Scripture, so aid us in realizing that inspiration in our lives for this day and age, motivating us to dedicate our lives in service to you, and fellow sisters and brothers along this earthly journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to inspire men and women with the power of your spirit 
enabling men to embrace the gift of your spirit within women and women to realize the potential you've placed within them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern us, who make, administer, or judge our laws, that they will work increasingly for the just and fair treatment of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the well-being of our planet, that climate researchers will be guided with wisdom, government leaders with resolve, and all of us with an awareness of that which is enough and the willingness to share the rest with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our sisters and brothers on Maui and the many who have lost loved ones, homes, and businesses, and internationally for the relief efforts following the devastating flooding in Libya and earthquake in Morocco. Uphold with comfort and hope all those who've been afflicted and strengthen them as they work to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the hungry, houseless, and those with too few resources. Guide our communities with the knowledge and will to provide needed resources for all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for young and old. Give impatient youth true vision and experienced age openness to new things. Give both an appreciation and wonder for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dying who face the final mystery. May they enjoy light and life intensely. Keep dignity and greet death unafraid, believing in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our musicians and all artists who enrich our lives, that their creativity will flourish with your spirit working within them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you've called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Provide us with that peace which the world cannot give and a song in our hearts that rings with joy and gratitude. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. train you find your best way cause way to high oh, hurry get on board it's coming listen to the rails are thrumming on board get on the A train then you will be in sugar hill in high
Saxophones, Reggie Padilla on tenor saxophone, and our band director, and our special guest today, Isaiah Morphin on alto saxophone. And over in the corner, Manny Dial, who makes it possible for all of you at home to join us. Thank you all for being here. Have a safe and wonderful evening, and do come back. We're here every Thursday, 6 o'clock. <laughs>